Hi, good to be here. My name is Sampo Hietanen. I know it's almost impossible to pronounce. I'm the guy you can blame for the, for the fuss and buzz about this concept called mobility as a service, which means that I've been the village idiot that's been talking about it for way over 10 years in, in few events. What it is all about is what I'd want you to remember. It is about disruption that is happening in transport. When you think about the disruption, do not think about uh, transport. Just think about what happened to telecom, what happened to media, what happened to any of the others, because it's something similar there. I got a lot of these questions saying that you must have a great lobbying agency, you must have a good media agency and all of these things. We don't. There hasn't been a single person doing any media or lobbying. Trust me, I know when the whole concept Mars was born, there's no evil conspiracy behind it. In a way, it makes me want to believe in that world is good because this all has happened by people just getting excited about the whole thing. So what is mobility as a service then? It all boils down to this one simple question. Whoops. Yes, it is right. And this is what I would like to ask to you. How many of you actually do have the car? I know you were asked, oh, did you get here by car? How many? So. By the end of this speech, you'll all give it up then. What you can think is just close your eyes and think of what would I have to hear promised to you so that you would give it up, but it's not there. Give it up, but give me the same money. Because that is the one most relevant question in that. And I would argue, and I've done this speech about mobility as a service in over 2,000 events, uh, and I've, I've done this in front of quite many economists, that this is the biggest question for the economic growth of the world for the next decades. Trust me on that one. So, let's try it out. What if I were able to give you everything? All the Ubers and taxis and metros and SNCF and all of those, all the car shares, car rentals, bike shares, all of them in a really, really, really simple subscription. Would that make it? Probably not, because actually, uh, you'd probably want to do, and I've done this quite a number of times, and probably some of you will come to me afterwards and say, yeah, I'd be okay if you can put them all in a convenient way together. But what's good about the car is that it gives you a promise. It gives you a service promise. So it's not just putting them together. It's not just giving you the data. Data does not set you free. It is about giving you the service promise of something like, something like, ooh, it's not there. Oh, it's over there. The one, on the, the one on the up left, maybe that would give you... If I can sell, it, sell you a dream, then I'm on to something. Because it is about how do you define your competition. You know, we're not... I come from a company who does this mass of putting all of these things together. Uh, and we're there to compete against car ownership. But remember, compete. Not with ideology, it's because they've done a really great job in selling people a huge dream. I admire Henry Ford for providing us freedom of mobility. Really, that's an ex excellent thing to have. And we will not start giving up our cars, or at least there will not be enough value in that until we plant a bigger dream into people's minds. Now, car has been the, our freedom insurance for quite a long time. We'll have to give something bigger. So if I were able to, let's say we're in EU, we were able to make roaming for, for the telecom. Let's say I give you a subscription of mobility that works everywhere in EU. You spend the same money as you spent for your car, and you can hop on any train, taxi, car share, bike share, everything is at your hand. And that starts to be a bigger dream, for many, at least. So good thing for us is, that the world is moving towards this. We are moving from ownership. I mean, I get this a lot anywhere I go, and trust me today, someone will come to me, yeah, this might work in Finland. We French, we love to own our cars. And that will be a 50 plus man who will do that. And then there's someone below 30 that will come and say, no, I don't. I'd like to get rid of my car because it's a hassle. I'd like to be more free of all of this and be able to move, when, use it whenever I want. So the trends are there. Whether we want it or not, this is happening. I'm a big supporter that this will happen in a European way, which is much more, let's say, uh, public transport friendly. 
the change will happen. There is a tsunami that's hitting this. I actually stole this. I was talking to a former CEO of Nokia who said after five minutes, you guys don't understand what kind of a tsunami is hitting you. You better be prepared. And why? Because the economic scales are big. The people use, this is the second large expenditure for people after housing is transport. 85 or almost 85% of the money in the market goes into a car that is used roughly about 4% of the time. So on a macroeconomic scale, someone will crack this formula. This is what digital disruption is about. You find a place where you can do something and you do it to huge productivity leap. And this is why I base that, yes, this will be the biggest question for economic growth of our times. But it does not happen unless somebody provides you with the dream. If we compare this with telecom, and that's why it's been easy to sell in Finland politically, is to say, look, it's the same thing that happened from the 80s in telecom to this date, just with one difference. This is 10 times bigger. People have 10 times more money in their pockets for mobility than they have for their mobile phones, and all, all that's embedded in that. That's why it's big. That's why it's huge. And in all honesty, in digital, digitalizing different, different fields, uh, Europe's been taking a beating after telecom. They've been coming from left and right. And I would really, really think that in mobility, we could take it back because we have all the, all the components. Now, wherever I go, uh, people say, yes, this is great. And if you're a normal person, so you say, yeah, yeah, this is exactly how I would like to buy my mobility. And then you think that this is not rocket science. That should be quite doable. Why on earth isn't it here yet? And that's where it comes to, comes to this, let's say, issues. We cannot do this. We cannot come to Paris if I don't have RATP, if I don't have the taxis, if I don't have Velolib, if I don't have all of these. So this has to happen on top of an e ecosystem, which means, just like the deputy mayor here said, it's time for political leadership again. The issues in society that technology can solve, where one company can solve it, they're done. There's no more left. The only ones are the big ones now, and that is, you know, it needs a political leadership again. And I know I lose my credibility as a startup CEO for this, but that's how it is. I see three ways of trying to get this market going. Everybody wants to dominate this. Everybody wants to say, yes, yes, I like this mask. I will do it myself. Is there anyone from Germany here? Good. Sorry to insult. I used to call this the Deutsche Bahn approach, which is that everyone will integrate to me, and I will, of course, integrate to no one. Well, that's why you can't get this off the ground. The only way of ha getting this there, no, this will not be the winner takes it all. No, people do want choice. The only way of getting this done is through an open ecosystem. It's hard. And it does need political leadership to get going. But we're good at this in Europe. We've done this before. We can regulate. And I, I know I lose my credibility again by saying that, look, uh, the greatest innovations in mobility do no not happen with us. They happen in policy and regulation. But that's how it is. If it is true, if we can use the existing infrastructure instead of building everything again, it's extremely scalable. I've looked at Mexico City, Singapore, we've looked at uh, Indonesia, many places. The pieces for creating mass exist. The actually expensive, uh, expensive stuff is there. All we have to do is digitally to be able to crack it open, and that's it. How do we make money? That's now I reve reveal all our big secrets here. Uh, it's quite simple. I give you a flat rate of mobility. I promise that I can get you anywhere, anytime, because that is your dream, to be able to go anywhere, anytime. Flat rate, and I know actually how many kilometers you're going to do, because over the population we know how many trips and how long the trips are and so, so I know the kilometers that have to be produced. Anytime you walk, I make money. You bike, I make money. You use public transport, I make money. The rest, I'll have to have there for the dream, but of course, it's in our best interest to use the more active and sustainable modes because they're cheap. That's how it works. That's how we can make money. Also, by liberating from the markets quite a lot. So, it boils down to this. I'm a transport engineer myself, and we always try to solve these issues on a map. 
this issue will not be solved on a map. It will be solved right here. If we can't sell this to the individuals as something as valuable as the car, it will not be happening. We cannot make it. People are not like wastewater. They don't like that. They don't like it being like, like this. So it is quite doable. We've been doing this for quite a while. Now first in Helsinki, now also in UK, in Antwerp, where we have a huge launch also next Friday. Uh, so we know a little bit about what happened. And I can honestly say it's been going better than expected. This is what we're after. We can actually provide all of these things. Make money whilst we're also saving the world. It is quite doable in transportation, but it does take a village. It does take everyone on board, the whole ecosystem to make it happen. And defining the competition, which is then the car ownership. We're great. We have uh, French heritage. The first investor in our company was actually Transdev. We've ha we have car OEMs which you would think that would not invest in something like this, but it seems it is. Uh, players like Toyota, who have invested into us, and it seems that we've been able to get quite a lot of that. What is important for us is design. Car is a well-designed product, and we're, we're really happy that we've been winning one of these, some of these global awards for designs. Now, really shortly show you what's happened, what the, what the service is, and what's happened in Helsinki first. Now, hit. The WIM app makes going places easier than ever. A monthly fee covers all your journeys with everything from buses, trains, taxis, brand new cars, bikes, and more. WIM takes away the hassle of traveling. It has it all, planning, routing, and tickets. You can create a monthly plan to match your needs or just pay as you go. So how do you travel with WIM? It's simple. Enter your destination, and WIM combines the best transport options to take you door to door. It tells you when it's time to go and shows your moves on a map. WIM is as spontaneous as you are. On sunny days, you can jump on a city bike for a short trip. And when you need a car, WIM helps you get behind the wheel and on the road, whether it's for a few days or a few hours. Fancy a film at the last minute? Grab a cab on a WIM. All you need to do is press one button. Follow your approaching taxi on the map, and when it arrives, just hop in and enjoy the ride. Since its launch in 2017, WIM has already helped users travel smarter on over 1.5 million trips. Soon, you'll even be able to use WIM for journeys between different cities and different countries. WIM is already live in Helsinki, Birmingham, and Antwerp, with many more locations to follow soon. Are you ready to go on a whim? So for someone who's been on this subject talking about it for a long time, I think that they gave me the investment money to shut me up, but it didn't happen, sorry. Uh, it's been going much better than I ever expected. We would have thought that it's only the 25 to 35s that actually use it. We have in Helsinki, which is a bit over half a million city, we have over 70,000 users, which is way above we ever, ever dreamed of with quite a little marketing. At the same time, the users are not just the 25 to 35s. There's quite a number of 50 plus people that actually use it. Why they use it is exactly what we thought in the beginning. It's, whoa. Oh, sorry. Uh, to use public transport, and they've been using quite more of that. I get a lot of these that know because they have taxis and everything, people will start using all of the cars and all of that. It's not true. About 90% of all of that is public transport of our usage. Why do people use it? It's because they want, they want to have everything from one stop shop. Also, what they are doing, and we did a quite a thorough study on our users, is you know, once they have everything from one stop shop, they're much more easier and much more inclined to actually uh, use public transport, walking, biking, and reduce their going onto the car. And this is what's happened. If you see some of the tweets, and we do get a lot of these that, hey, can you make sure that you're here after six months because I just sold my car and I really, really, really want to make sure that you're there. When you do buy your car, and this is really important, many people think that the whole thing about multimodal route planning, it's not. Actually, 83% of our usage is not using any type of routing. They just want the access. When you go and you buy your car, you're not thinking about your next trip. You're thinking about a year ahead. It's your freedom guaranteed to go anywhere, anytime. 
people in Tokyo, for example, over 50% of the cars are used less than once a week. So it's not about getting around, it's about that certainty. And if we can liberate that money out to the markets for the services to be used, then we're on to something. So, what would it really take to make it in Paris? I just promised that it's, it's about six months and we're here. It doesn't need that much. I could say one thing, the minute you start a project or a program and you put a tender out for MAST, you've messed it up. Don't choose us, let the user choose. We're not, we, we can't be the only provider because then we can't fulfill their dreams. There needs to be a comp competition in the MAST providers. Few questions, do you want that the citizens will get uh, access to everything from One Stop Shop? One do you want them to, uh, to, uh, to be able to choose their operator, mass operator, and do they deserve uh, a roaming subscription? And what you have to do is just get the technical, uh, technical APIs open, they normally are, and secondly, make sure that you can make contracts where the likes of us can purchase. I would like to end this with something that I strongly believe, that, look, we're in a situation now where the Finns go and we play ice hockey, just like with the mayor over there, uh, the French play football and you play well. Uh, someone else go and do sumo wrestle. We need to come up with the market rules that it works. And that's not me who makes it. That's the cities and governments who need to own the market vision. That's it. Thank you. L ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Sampo Hertenen. Thank you so much.